Hey everyone. You're back. <laughs> uh, yeah, after one awesome session about um, static sites, we are going to follow up um, with something a bit related, PWA, Progressive Web App, um, with Angular. So this is also going to be an interesting one. It's going to be presented by Ovin Balgobin. Um, let's just bring him in and, and get started, All right? So hello, Alvin. Thanks for joining hey, us. Hey, You're everyone. <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm good. And what about you, guys? Yeah. We've been here good. all day and everything. <laughs> we, are, we are like assimilating a whole day of sessions. So <laughs> we're good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it's fun. Yeah. It's fun. We, we are on the right track. Um, everything related to websites, um, PWA and so on, it's in the right place. Um, so, Ovin, why don't you just give a brief intro about yourself and what you're going to talk about before we lead up to your session. Okay, so, hey everyone, my name is Ovin. I am a lead developer at uh, Digital 14, or some of you may know it as ePages. And today I will be talking about uh, building a progressive web app with Angular Framework. So, I will explain a bit what is a progressive web app and also Angular framework, so for those who don't know. And then progressively, we will see how it interacts and how it works. With All right. And you've been working with um, PWA slash Angular for, for, for a while, or um, is this something new you got into, got interested in? Yeah, actually, I uh, have been working with Angular for quite some time now. Nice. Actually, since Angular GS till Angular 10, I've been oh. working with Angular. That's all it. right. Yeah, but, you've been, uh, you've been through, through it yeah. all then. <laughs> yeah. But for the uh, past six or seven months, I have been experimenting, you know, web component, uh, PWA, stuff a bit. Uh, we don't see it in our everyday work, but it was yeah. nice to understand it, to work with it, to then manipulate it a bit and all. So yeah. that's why. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. Awesome. PWA needs to, to take off. It's an awesome technology. It's uh, I like it personally. I Like you said, we don't get to use it or develop it that often, but um, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to your session. Maybe this is going to be inspiring for some of us, some of our viewers. As usual, feel free to leave your comments in the live chat, leave your questions in the live chat to the viewers. Um, right now, I'm going to send the link. Um, I think it may associate to the session that Alvin is going gonna, is gonna to do. So um, just make sure to replace the dots with actual dots. You'll know it when you see it. <laughs> All right. Um, Ovin, it's all you now, all right? Okay. The floor is yours. So, thank you. Okay, hello everyone again. Uh, we just, just sent you a link. It is a demo app that I have implemented based on this year's theme on uh, superheroes and on progressive web app. So basically, I have provided you with an application which will work both offline, online, and should be very fast to learn. But we will come to it in a few moments, uh, just so that you can have a view about the app and the superheroes and everything, so you can just uh, scroll through it if you want. And I will give you the Git repo at the end of the session so that you can uh, uh, fork it and uh, you know uh, play with it, break it and everything. So that's up to you guys. So. This, uh, in this session, I'm going to talk uh, basically what is a progressive web app for those who don't know, and what are some of the popular web applications and the success stories that uh, uh, you may or may not uh, have heard about, and uh, what are the smart add-ons that uh, make a website a progressive web uh, application. Then uh, we will dive into and the Angular framework, and uh, by adding the Angular slash PWA, we will see how we can progressively modify our Angular application to a progressive uh, web application. I have a demo which I have sent you the link already. Then uh, we will test the Lighthouse compatibility mode for a progressive web app, just to test if uh, our application has been successfully 
uh, converted to a progressive web app. And then I will give you the repo link and so I will discuss a bit about the custom enhancements that you can provide into the web application. Okay, so what is a progressive web app? Basically, you just take a normal web application, even a static web application, a single page web application. You just add uh, some new features available in the browser nowadays, and you have a progressive web app. So, what does this progressive web app uh, bring to the table? First, it is downloadable. So, you can have it on your mobile, on your desktop, or you can use it as a, web, as a web application in your browser itself, as you want it. It can provide you offline support, meaning that uh, you don't, once it is downloaded, like a native application, you can use it uh, offline. All the data will be there, or part of the data as per the developer wish. Uh, so it provides a faster loading time than uh, the, let's say, the current web application or the current single web application page. And uh, the, once it is downloaded, you have the same look and feel as a native application on Android or on iOS. Okay, so <clears throat> basically, what we are doing here is we are taking a existing application and we are adding some add-ons and we are automatically converting this application to a progressive web app. We have these advantages, we have companies who are already using it and uh, this is what I will uh, show you in a bit. So, here we have a few of the companies who have uh, showed interest in the progressive web app and have developed their own application as such so that uh, they can provide a better user experience to the users. We have Forbes, Pinterest, AliExpress, Flipkart, Telegram, Uber, Trivago, Tinder. We have other many, many other applications, but these are just a few that which are highly related uh, based among the progressive web application. Okay. But, uh, you know, you don't have to trust me on my words. I can show you some stats that will basically tell us about why these companies are actually uh, really, okay, sorry. Why these companies are really investing in the progressive web application uh, techniques. So on this side, on the pwsstats.com, you can have uh, numerous success stories about uh, different companies who have switched to the progressive web app uh, technique and they have seen uh, an increase in the user interaction, in the user views, uh, in the loading time, uh, among others. So like uh, Kubota, Denhams, you have UK Closing, all these guys have uh, switched the application and they have seen a change, a positive change in the user experience and in the loading time. For example, if we check uh, for Tinder, Tinder has cut the loading time from 11.9 seconds to 4.6 or 4.7 seconds. And on top of that, the uh, progressive web app is 90% smaller than the native Android app. So this uh, implies faster loading. This implies uh, a first bit, a first paint job, uh, which is takes less uh, time than needed. And since it is lighter, it provides the same user experience and everything. Uh, users actually prefer this mode. Or well, check for Trivago, they have an increase of 150% for people who had added it to its uh, home screen. There is a lot of interaction with the application and practically 60%, 67% continue to browse the site when they come back online. So this is some of the of a few success stories that you can see, you can check the website. If you go directly on it, they will have link and everything to uh, back up what is, back up their claim and everything like this. So 
you can check it and uh, just to have an idea why it is becoming more popular, why people are investing in this uh, uh, technique. So, this is some of the success stories. And now, let us see about uh, the PWU state stats, if you want to check it out. Okay. So a progressive web app, I told you that uh, there's a few small add-ons that we have to add to make a current web application or website to a progressive web application. So we need a secure environment for the application. We can't host the a progressive web app on HTTP only because of the service worker, because of security uh, issues and everything. So they have incorporated this uh, technique, this uh, rule that only on secure location, on secure environment that it will be run. Uh, the second main uh, component is a manifest file. The manifest file is basically like uh, metadata for the browser to interpret so that he can uh, determine whether it is a progressive web app, whether when it is downloaded, what is the name of the application that we should set? What is the icon that we should set? You know, things like this, like the background color, uh, whether you want the application to open up as a browser inside or as a standalone, or you want it full screen, depending on certain parameters, we can check it out. And uh, if you want to have a full list of this uh, tech, you can go to the web app manifest that, uh, in the developer.mozilla.org. You will have the list of all the attributes that we can add up and uh, uh, create our manifest. So basically, a manifest is uh, in this format where we have the name of the application, the short name, which represents the name on your mobile app or on your iPad or everything starting URL, display, this is what I was telling you, whether you want it standalone on like a browser mode or as a full screen, uh, background color, just, uh, you know, if you, uh, we want just set a, a simple color for all the application on, on a progressive web app. If you want to theme it to better, uh, how do we say it? Uh, for your graphical needs and everything, you have a website all in blue, so you want a background color in white. So because of this thing, we have this background color description. This is just for your website information in case that someone requests it and want to check. And uh, all the icons that we may have or may not have about <clears throat> when we are downloading on an Android uh, mobile or on an iPhone, or on your desktop, we need an icon to display actually. So this is basically the definition, the metadata for the images that will be downloaded and shown as an application. And if ever your web app is related to uh, an application on the Play Store, on the iOS Store, on the App Store, sorry, so we can provide a link so they can uh, internally, they can redirect to the Play Store app or to the App Store app. And this is just to provide a better user experience and everything like this. So this is a manifest. This is just a simple JSON file, but uh, very important uh, to define that an application is a progressive web application. Okay. So except for the metadata, we have the third component, which is the service worker. Now, the service worker is here for quite some years now, and it is a very, very powerful tool for browsers. The service worker basically <coughs> will provide you with a, a caching strategy, will provide you with interception of your network files. Uh, so, we can say, Actually, Service Worker is like a proxy server between your browser and your server. Any request you will make from your application towards the server will be intercepted here. And every any replies you get from the server towards your application, it is intercepted. 
it can be manipulated and then push forward towards the web app. Okay. And it is very important if you want uh, pro uh, to convert your application to a progressive web app. So, uh, basically, most of all what I have said. So, it is as a proxy server within the web app, the browser, and the network. It is a JavaScript file, so at a certain moment, we can uh, modify it, actually. We can uh, create our, uh, we can, uh, like, uh, how will I say it? Uh, if we want to subscribe to a certain errors, or we want to subscribe to check if there are new version available, stuff like that, we can uh, create our own function and manipulate it as such. We can intercept and modify resource requests. Uh, this is not only Ajax, but image, HTML, any resources that we have, it, we can intercept it and modify it as required. We can cache the content. And one thing which is very important about the policy web app, uh, sorry, about the service worker, it is that it, is, it runs on a, a separate thread than the JavaScript thread. So, it is non-blocking for your application. It is running on the background asynchronously. You can synchronize data. You can provide for offline support and everything, just because it is on a separate thread. And it also provides features like uh, push notification and as well as background synchronization of the APIs. But uh, we will get into it a bit later. Okay. So, service workers, manifest, and a secure connection. That's all for creating a progressive web app. Now, before we dive into creating with the Angular app, I wanted to uh, show you the application that I have created on uh, GitHub, which will illustrate uh, our concept of progressive web app. So here we have uh, what I would call a superhero app, and you can uh, browse and check uh, uh, some of the heroes if you want. I have added the name or the aliases, their full name, their full name if they have any, and their first appearance also a publisher. So this is uh, just a small app that I have done. But since we are in the team of superheroes, I thought that maybe this can be interesting to show. So as you see, I have like 500 different superheroes here. And these 500 superheroes, you must agree with me that it will take time to do it. With all these images, with all these text, with the request to the API and everything, it will take time. And we want to reduce this time. We want to provide it offline. We want that users can check it out anytime because uh, normally just you want to cost check something. For example, for static, uh, you want to just know the strength, power, intelligence, durability. Depends. You, know, you, see, you use it as you want. So, uh, we have like uh, 500 images to load, uh, the content to load. We have to build this. And on top of it, uh, it is based on an Angular application. So behind, we have to load all the files associated to Angular, build the DOM, then take the data, build the loop. After we build the loop, then we request each resources like this one after another. OK. So it is a simple app, but behind the performance and everything, it will take time. It will be an issue. So you have the link if you want. You can browse through it. You can uh, just uh, turn the network off to check uh, if it is still working. You can download it, actually. You have a plus sign here. Once you click on it, uh, you can download it, and you will have an application as such uh, and, uh, an application as such, and here you will have all your data without the browser link and everything, just like an application actually. Sorry, I didn't have time to add a search or 
to filter and everything, but uh, you get the idea how it is. Okay. Ah, so, okay. Yeah, so this is the demo app that I will be, uh, we will be building using Angular. So how do we build this application? First of all, uh, I won't go into details about creating an Angular app because it is out of the scope of this uh, uh, session. But uh, just uh, if someone wants to do it, just to uh, end the new app, you will have a, a running application with it. So once you have this uh, Angular app, just download the at angular slash pwm npm package. You do npm uh, uh, install at angular slash pwm. It will add the package for you. And behind on the background, what it is doing, it is actually adding the service worker uh, libraries. It is uh, enabling the service worker support on the CLI. It is importing and registering the service worker on the app module. It, uh, it is integrating the link to the manifest.json file in the index.html. Uh, yeah, adding meta tags for the team color. It is installing icon files. And it is creating the service worker config file. So basically, this library is installing everything you need to create, uh, to convert the application to a progressive web application automatically. Uh, okay. So let me show you. I'm also not, don't think I will have enough time to actually run and install any Apple application. So I have already done it on my local machine. I will just uh, show you the file that has been created just so that I don't uh, uh, spend too much time just for. Okay. I hope the screen is large enough. So as I was, I was uh, telling you, we create a service worker config file. It creates a boiler tape, uh, boilerplate uh, template for you, where you have link to the schema.json, what is the uh, starting point of your application. And this asset together with this are already uh, built with the first installation of your Angular slash PWA. So basically on an Angular framework, since it, is, it has a proper order, it has a proper architecture, it can automatically determine which is your uh, index.html, where is your CSS file, uh, where you have set your assets, and uh, assets since they are like uh, images, videos, or whatever, you can lazy load it. But uh, GS files, CSS, we have to prefetch it. So this is already built by the Angular slash PWF library. And here we have regroup into asset groups and data groups. The data groups, it is a config that I have added later to cater for the Ajax request that you, I will make uh, on a second step to retrieve all the information about the superheroes and build my uh, page. So basically everything in this application has been cached uh, locally. And <coughs> we have, and I have put a strategy of uh, performance, which means that I it will first load the cache then request for new data. But uh, this you can change and you can put the strategy as freshness like this. Guys, that uh, we will first check for the, we will first check the network for uh, the data. If I don't have it during a set timeout, I will uh, roll back and display the cache data. So when you include the freshness, you have to add a timeout, and basically, you add, uh, you set the time that you wish uh, to wait before we request the cache data. But uh, this is only one uh, aspect, one uh, way of caching the AJAX data. 
we have other ways, but this depends upon uh, creating our own service workers file and implementing a custom uh, caching strategy, which we need for our for our application based on our needs. But I have restricted myself to just uh, set it into these data groups, since the uh, caching strategy on a service worker on a custom uh, service worker implies a whole session in itself actually. So, yeah, yes. So this is my uh, Angular service worker config file, and uh, if I go into my SLC, this is where my whole application resides. I will have my manifest file. This is why I was uh, explaining a few slides back. Uh, it is uh, attributes, uh, metadata, as you want to tell, um, for the browser to recognize what it should do with the progressive web app. Set a background color, what is the display, what is the same color, things like that, and the icons. Okay. Um, I have hosted my application on uh, GitHub, and we have uh, an interesting concept on GitHub, the GitHub pages which hosts uh, static web pages uh, freely for you. So because it is free, I use it. And uh, we had to set a starting URL. So set your URL as your GitHub link and your repo, uh, <coughs> your repo name. If this is required, else the relative path will not be adapted and uh, the, the, uh, the the relative path will not be adapted, and your service worker will not determine whether it can cache this data or not. So this is very important that this stock URL is provided, especially if you are going to do it on a GitHub page as yours too. This is a manifest file. Then um, we have uh, on our app automatically. You will check. You see that in the routing and uh, uh, the module bootstrapping. They have we have registered the service worker itself, and it has been enabled on the production board. So, because in the local environment uh, we don't have uh, secure connection and everything, so it won't naturally work. So this is a registration of the service worker module. This has been done automatically by the library. And if we go into assets. Normally, on, in the icons, uh, the first six or seven icons has been uh, deployed by the library itself. The rest I have added, I have built by uh, fabicongenerator.org, so I can have a custom uh, image for my web application. So environments, everything has been customized, and we have one last customization is in the HTML file. If you check on the HTML file, you will see that <coughs> there's a link to the mani uh, manifest file already. So to run it automatically, we don't have much to do. We just make a build now. We make a build, it will, and we deploy it. We can already have a full fetch application, web progressive web app application. Just a uh, note on the GitHub pages. If you are going to uh, build uh, for GitHub pages, make sure that uh, you add a base href for the repo name. This is also important because when once you build it, once you oh, sorry, when you build it, we have. These uh, paths should be created automatically so that the uh, uh, static uh, files know from where you should uh, retrieve the, the rest of the configs and everything like this. Okay, so this is my build, my ahead of time compilation of my application. And here, my application, so just let me put it on the mobile if I can. And here on the 
on the letters check the network. Uh, for, before we go to the network, on the application tab, you will check that you will see that the a manifest file has been uh, uploaded automatically, and it will email the config that we have input. Okay, so this implies that we have a manifest file. We have this has extrapolated all this data uh, to provide a user experience for when we are downloading the application. And if we check on the service workers tab, you will see that uh, a service worker has been activated and it is currently running. So next time you will be going to you will be going to build a new version of your application and then set it here. This uh, will detect the change and on the next reload it will automatically load the new changes. So this is a bit about the service worker and the manifest. Unless these two has been failed, your application cannot be recognized as a progressive web app. And also on the cache storage, we have a bunch of uh, hash code normally representing uh, the version of our files is the latest, which is the manifest. Everything is set here, just so that we can uh, uh, we can rapidly uh, compare and uh, refresh the data if it need be, or uh, keep the data here until we can provide the new version to the user without disrupting the user experience. So this is a bit about the progressive web app. And on the on the application, when we load the application, you will see that they we are served from the service worker. All this data is being served from the service worker. Basically, it has been uh, uh, it has been intercepted uh, from uh, our application. Our application has requested this file. This file already exists in the cache memory of the service worker. So it is redirected, uh, it is uh, uh, automatically uh, dispatched to the web application. So let me check. I have set uh, the network for my application to offline, just so that uh, you can <laughs> see. It is still working, it is still uh, deploying the application, and it will it will also work if you are set on airplane mode, uh, deactivate your data, or anything you are going to uh, deactivate. So you will see that your data is already here and everything is functional. I haven't uh, put much interactive buttons or whatever, but basically it is the same concept. It will, it will always work. And the user experience is assured as such. I have already downloaded the application uh, on my desktop, but uh, feel free to download it on your mobile or iPad, whatever you have. So here, we have all my, and did you see that it is? It has been loaded very, very rapidly, like uh, in a matter of one, two seconds. All these images, all this data, everything is available at the snap of the hand. This provides for a better user experience where the user don't have to wait five, six seconds before seeing a first paint job of your application. So here it is for the, Heroes up. Hopefully, you like this application a bit so that you can go through it. And that's it for a basic web application on Angular. You don't have much to do, but we can extend the user experience a bit more if we are going to. Let me show you. For example, as I was telling you, we have <clears throat> like uh, 
whenever the service worker has a new version available, the service worker has to check the JSON file. On the JSON file, you will see that we have like uh, all the assets that we have loaded with their hash code. There will be a comparison of all the hashes to check if there has been changes in some file or not. If there has been some changes, it will wait until uh, there is no instance of a service worker running. Then it will load the new data so that on the next uh, uh, run of the application, you have the refresh data. Now, this is one concept. Now, consider that uh, you want to have this uh, new data. If we reload the application automatically, it will be a bad user experience in such a way that you have reloaded the data, but uh, you haven't informed the user that there has been some data, there have, do you actually want to reload now or do you want to reload later, you know, stuff like that. So we can intercept these actions I don't know if the screen is big enough, so um, just them. So we have a package for the service worker update. On the service worker update, it will automatically detect that there has been some changes when they have been comparing the uh, cache uh, service worker design config and the available one from the server. So there is an observable that uh, provides this data. Uh, it will, one, every time there is a new version available, it will automatically dispatch the response. And from this response, we can, at our side, uh, create a model or inform the user that uh, there have been some changes. Do you want to reload the application or not? Just uh, providing uh, this small pod can provide a much better ex user experience where the user is not disrupted that why is my application reloading all at once, just like this. Like this, we, have, we can intercept the uh, service worker uh, uh, fetch uh, files. We can uh, intercept uh, uh, like, uh, how do I to say, uh, the, let me, <clears throat> so we can uh, manually check for update. When I say that we manually check for update, it means that it will request the new service worker file again and then compare as such. So basically, we are trying to provide a much better user experience. We have more to go in on service workers on this library, but for the sake of just providing an introduction to the progressive web app and Angular, uh, I haven't gone. I will not go much into details about the service worker, how to customize a service worker, how to actually intercept all files and create a personalized uh, experience, like. Uh, you want to cache all data, you want to provide several cache uh, data so that user can switch back to a previous version or uh, you won't, don't want to cache certain specific data but just provide a, a, like an, a component where you will show that you have to connect to the internet to, uh, to get this data. So around this much, there are basically many things that we can do with the service worker, and the service worker itself is a whole course on itself. On my application, uh, I will continue to uh, provide uh, new, data, new information on this uh, concept, but I will also provide you guys with another demo on just service workers. Uh, take some time to come, so wait a bit. Yes, so one thing I forgot to, to show you that once we have created, a, let me just put it up on nine. One we, once we have put up our application as a progressive web app, we have to determine whether it fulfills all those criteria pertaining to a progressive web app. So we have this uh, on Chrome, we have this uh, 
extension lighthouse. On this lighthouse, normally, basically, we can test for performance, progressive web app, best practices, accessibility, SEO, and everything. Um, just for fun, I will just check everything so you can have an idea what's going on. Let's generate the report. We will take some time, like from, uh, putting it offline, retrieving the data, and building the report. So just a few seconds to complete this call. And it is interesting to see that it provides a few informative text. So just a moment now. Okay, so my application and the performance, it has an 86. So largest content for it was on 1.3 seconds. So after 1.3 seconds, I had got a first uh, visual. It is quite some time, so I have to work on this part. But yes, okay. Accessibility, accessibility basically a blind person or a person who needs assistance is going to uh, navigate through the application. The best practices, okay, cool, 100. That's here, yeah, cool. This is a progressive web app. This is what is the most important for this uh, talk. Is it false and reliable? Yeah, it is false and reliable. Page load is false enough on mobile networks. When offline, there is a 200 request available. The start URL is available. Is it installable? So do we have HTTPS? Yeah, we have it. Did we register the service worker? Oh, there is a service worker. Does the web app manifest meet the installability requirements? So the name, the you know, background color, the start URL, things like this. This is also OK. And is our progressive web app optimized? So there's a redirect from HTTP traffic to HTTPS. There is. Is not customer for custom plus for 512 pages. Uh, yes, so basically it is telling me that I have to add like uh, on the config file, on the manifest config file, I will need to add, um, here I need to add an asset based on the 512 pages. And uh, all the rest, team color, content, uh, okay. Manifest doesn't have a mouse cable icon. This is means that uh, my icon doesn't uh, fully take the whole area of the square of an icon. So just I just have to put the uh, type mouse cable in here, and this also will be good. So basically, our progressive web app is free on free of our force, free on free on installable, and except those two sticks on it for the optimization part. Okay, so I'm a bit late on my <laughs> time, so I'm almost done. On the customer enhancement, it is basically about the service workers providing a custom experience of a push notification in conjunction with the web circuit and print like that. And here you can have uh, my repo link, also my demo app if you want to browse through it. And uh, yes, if you are interested at digital 14, join us at epages.com, no problem. And thank you for watching, and sorry that I have taken so much time. Yush. No worries at all, Ovin. That was really yeah. interesting. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. So let's just quickly check, check the chat on YouTube. Any questions, Vidush? Um, no, no, we don't have, um, we don't have any questions in the chat. Hey, but, that means you explain things really good. <laughs> <laughs> but on my side, I can tell you that um, I actually opened the link and, and 
got the PWA on my phone and just a heads up to the crowd. It is working as a PWA. It's nice. It's awesome. It's loading. The images are cached. It's um, it's a good job, actually. It was a great presentation, awesome. Alvin. Thank you very much. Do you have any closing notes, anything you want to share with, uh, with the viewers before we close off? Uh, thanks, guys, for watching. And if you have any questions, if you have any queries, you can always contact me for Angular or for Progressive Web App or for Web Component if you have any questions. Um, you're always welcome. All right. Yes, they awesome. have so <laughs> they can follow you. Um, okay, so we are going to conclude this session. Thank you for being here, Ovin. Thank um, you so much, Ovin. Yep. Thanks, you too, Next guys. Bye. 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 Okay. Okay. So who do we have next? Our next Did session is going to be up. Ah, we are going a bit different this time. It's not JavaScript. This time it's PH, PHP. So PHP microservices with Swap. Um, okay. Yeah. That's going to be in 15 minutes. So I'm going to take a short break. I don't know about you, Marine. <laughs> I'm going to get some. I am to too. And so, yeah. we'll be back. Yeah. In 15 at, minutes. Yeah, at 2 p.m., 15 minutes. Stay tuned, guys. See you later. <laughs>